Heidi Ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today, along with my son Nathaniel. He's doing the camera work today. Guys, we're going to try to fix our washing machine today. We've been out of a washing machine for about a week now. We've had to take uh, some, our dirty clothes down to mom and dad's and let them uh, do a few loads for us throughout the week. But anyhow, um, we got a part today that we think is the culprit. And here's, here's what we have. We actually ordered this from a local uh, supplier and it's actually a Whirlpool part, although this is a Maytag machine. Part number crosses over. Let me go ahead and give you this part number right now. This is a lid switch, part number 12001908. This is for our Maytag. Let me give you our model number here right quick. Uh, model number on this Maytag that we're working on, it's an older unit. It's LAT9416AAE, okay? That is our uh, Maytag model number. Uh, this sucker is really old. I don't even know if there's a year on here. I know I've had it over 10 years. Anyhow, we're gonna attempt to fix this thing today with this dryer switch. So stay tuned. Okay, folks, I took a wild guess when I um, diagnosed this thing because I saw that this is like the most common part that was bad with these things. This is the old switch here. This is the new one, okay? They look pretty much identical. It looks like this little plunger, which is, activates the switch, sticks out a little bit further on the brand new one. And also, it come with this little additional plunger here that may be for a different model or something. Ours doesn't have anything on it that looks like that would work. So that may be for a Whirlpool washer, I'm not sure. So we're going to uh, work on getting this installed today. And guys, right here is the top of the washer that I took loose the other day. Notice that the washer is unplugged. Make sure you unplug it before you start working on anything. This is the timer unit right here. Notice I had my voltmeter here. I was trying to ohm out this switch the other day, but it seemed to be working, okay? I watched a video where a guy was ohming out one and I was actually getting kind of the same results he was, but he actually, his switch fixed it. So I don't know, I don't know what's gonna to happen today. I don't know if this is gonna fix it or not. This video, if, you, if you're watching this video, there's a good chance it fixed it. If you're not watching this video, this is a total fail, and I definitely won't put this up here. But anyhow, uh, we are going to bring the camera uh, as far this way as you can, Nathaniel, and uh, try to keep people from seeing our dirty floor behind this thing. We're getting ready to vacuum out this floor. This thing is nasty underneath this washing machine. We're gonna work on that later before we push it back. But this is our switch, and it actually attaches right over here. I might grab the camera so I can show you more about how it attaches. Okay guys, we've got our new switch here. We're gonna install it. Notice we have this little arm here that moves back and forth as the lid comes up and down. It's actually gonna ride on the switch here, okay? The little metal part. And then you push in, okay? On the, as you can see, you got an ear right here where my thumb is and an ear right here where my index finger is. And you have this little slot here, a little slot there. So we're gonna to try to get these ears to go down in here. And then there's some little small ears that go into those right there. And it sits kind of at a little bit of an angle that's in here. So you, you push in, okay? And you get both of those to clear. And then we wanna push slightly back this way to lock it into place, okay? So now guys, it's locked in and it's ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and take our connector here and we're gonna plug our connector back in here correctly, okay? And it's got little ears on it. As you notice, there's an ear here and there's an ear here, two ears on this side. So you can't screw up. You can only plug it in one way. So we're gonna go and plug this in and then I'll show you how we put this whole thing back together. Okay, next we're gonna go and put this thing back together. I wanna to show you these two little ears here on each side. Here's two down here. Two down here on this side, and I think there's a little ear right here in the middle, like right there, okay? So we're gonna flip this thing up and, and put these pieces down into the metal part of the framing here, okay? So there's two ears here, and you're gonna push in, as you see how they're kinda angled here, uh, like a little foot. When you get it pushed in, you're gonna slide it back, okay? 
that's going to lock that in place. So let's go ahead and do that right quick. Okay, we're going to lift this up. We're going to pay close attention to make sure we don't pinch anything because there's like a vacuum line and some wiring here. We're just making sure we don't pinch anything. Cause an electrical fire. So we're in, okay? So now we're just gonna give it a little push back. There we go, you heard that pop on that side. And this side here looks like it's back as well, okay? Now, I can't really show you this right now, but on the back of each one of these, going straight down, there's one of these little quarter inch headed screws here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Not really gonna show that to you, because it's gonna be hard to film just on each side. So we'll do that right quick, and then we'll put the back on. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we're getting ready to put the back on, okay? Across the top here, there's three Phillips head screws that are gonna go in here. And then there's two of the um, quarter inch headed bolts that go here and right over here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right quick. First of all, this paperwork actually was up inside here, just kind of stuffed. I put it in a Ziploc bag, okay? I'm not gonna shove it back in here. I'm a little afraid that, you know, if that thing ever, uh, a little spark or something, that could catch that piece of paper on fire. So I just feel better having it out this way, okay? So I'm just gonna tape it straight to the back, put it in a Ziploc bag. We got some masking tape here. And if we ever decide we wanna look at the wiring diagram without pulling the cover off, we can do that, okay? Let's go ahead and just uh, tape this on here before we go back together. And that ought to be good enough right there. So now we are going to grab our Phillips head and one of our screws, and we're gonna lay this right across the back here. So there's nothing in the way that could pinch. So let's just start the middle one first, right here in the middle. And we will tighten that down. Okay, now guys, we got two more of these to do up top and then two on the very back. I won't bother showing that to you, it's pretty simple. And then we'll try this thing out and see if it works. Okay guys, we plugged in the washer. As you can hear, we got water going in right now. We put it on a small setting. We got just cold water going in. We're gonna see if it'll go through this uh, cycle here from light to finish. We're gonna make sure it uh, agitates. We're gonna make sure that it will uh, spin out fill up again and re-rinse. So just stay tuned and we'll let you know how it turns out. Okay, friends, I have a sad thing to let you know, guys. The repair that I made on the old Maytag did not fix the problem. My diagnosis was incorrect and it was a chance that I took. It was a $40 part and I figured the only other part that it could have been was the timer. The timer was like, I could not find it anywhere. It was not on the website. It was like a $250 part. So I'd already made up my mind that if this uh, lid switch did not fix it, I would not try to chase down a $240 part. I would buy a new washer and that's what we did. So Nathaniel, show them the washer that we bought today. Guys, we ended up buying a brand new Whirlpool. I'm not even sure exactly what the model number is. It's not, I don't see it on here. About a $750 unit that we purchased today. It's got a clear glass lid, but as you can see, it's fogging up a little bit because we're running a load of towels in here for the first time. So guys, we failed today at repairing the old Maytag. Bring the camera back up here so they can see my, my face of defeat here. But actually, I think we're also a winner too, because guys, I got to thinking about that washing machine and we got it used and I'm thinking around 2005. And so that sucker was 17 years plus, okay? Bring it back down here, thank you. Now we hope that this whirlpool here will last us 17 years. Uh, I'm, I'm very speculative as, if it could because it's got a lot of gadgetry. It even says that we can hook this thing up to the internet. <laughs> I guess you can be at work and you can start your washing machine via internet. So I don't think we'll be using that function, but anyhow. Um, just wanted to show you this, guys. Have a wonderful day. I feel like Nathaniel's got that camera right in my face. <laughs> anyway, have a wonderful day. Sorry the repair didn't work, but guys, it's always good to keep trying, okay? 
It's, it, you know, I don't feel bad at all that I wasted $40 on a part that did not fix it and ended up having to spend seven forty-eight. I believe it was. I'm not worried about that at all. It's the, th the fact is you got to try, folks. You got to get out there, try something different. If it don't work, turn your frown upside down and move on. Have a great day. Bye-bye.